Good morning. Oh my goodness, there are some mornings it just takes a lot to get going, doesn't it? I think t today might be one of those days. It's like, bah. So, well, whether you are here in person or you are participating online, it is so good to be here today with you. For those of you who may not know me, I'm Dawn Hauser. I'm the pastor here at Aiken United Methodist Church. You know, Jesus teaches his followers how to be healthy disciples in the parable of the sower. Today, we are going to explore this wonderful parable, and we are going to ask ourselves the question, what kind of seed am I? Do I have a shallow root system? Am I planted among the thorns? Or am I planted on fertile ground? Please stand as you are able, and if you would sing with me number 694 in the United Methodist hymnal, Come Ye Thankful People, Come. Seems a little odd to be singing about harvest, doesn't it? But the words of the song mean so much. So we begin our time together with a call to worship. You will find the words are written on the screen as well as in your bulletin. I invite you to read responsively with me. I will read the italicized words if you would respond with the bolded words. Come, let us worship all who have received the good news of Christ. The Lord warned some would hear of some would hear of but not understand God's love. And Jesus warned some would hear yet not truly but Jesus also taught that all who receive Christ 
receive eternity. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I invite you to enter into a posture of prayer with me. You will find our opening prayer is written on the screen as well as in your bulletin. Let's pray together. O oh God, whose glory is manifest in the beauty of the day and the vastness of the night sky, we bring you our praise for loving us and sending us a Savior. Thank you, Lord. In Christ we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Well, our scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, and we're in it is chapter 13, verses 1 through 9, and then it skips down to 18 through 23. And it reads like this, maybe. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and he sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on a path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched. And since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them out. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. If you have ears, hear. The parable of the sower explained. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what is sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root but endures only for a little while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, thus is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the age and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and another thirty. Here ends the reading of the gospel. I can't remember the last time I preached on this passage of scripture, and actually I kind of looked back and said, I, you know, I used to write my sermons out, and so I have like 500 sermons in my computer. Don't ask me why I'm keeping them. I'm never going to use them, but, but they're there. Maybe they'll enter into a book someday for somebody. But um, I couldn't find this passage of scripture that I had ever preached on this passage of scripture. It's an interesting interesting passage of scripture. It, um, it is a reminder to all of us who are already disciples of Jesus Christ. Now, I don't know about the rest of you. Danny, I'm going to move. <laughs> she knew I was going to do it. <laughs> I don't know about the rest of you, but I think for me, Sometimes I'm the seed that falls among the thorns. Sometimes I'm the seed that falls on the hard ground. And sometimes I'm these seeds in multiple places. And it's because I'm human. And I think everybody is like that. We have seasons of our lives where we're very, very fruitful. And we have seasons of our lives where, well, everything just seems to be a wreck, right? So... <laughs> But I, I think about this passage of Scripture from that perspective. 
You know, lots of times preachers will preach on this, and it's all about going out and saving souls and, and making sure that you're planting your seeds in fertile ground. I, I'm worried about me being the seed. I'm worried about me and what kind of seed am I and how am I living in the world. That, to me, is going to help me to be an example to others. It's an important aspect of being a disciple of Jesus Christ. Jesus is teaching these disciples, teaching not just the disciples, but all these people. Here he is sitting in this boat, and he's preaching or he's telling these, these stories, these parables. We oftentimes think of Jesus, in, especially in this parable, standing up in the boat, preaching this wonderful sermon. That isn't what happened. That isn't what happened. The Hebrew people of that time were tribal people. They were an auditory people. They did not have things written down. All of the information that they were given was given to them in story form. He was telling them stories. Stories that had meaning, that had values. He was teaching them through stories how to be good disciples, healthy disciples. And what he was saying to them is, not everybody that you share the word with is going to hear it and have it, have it resonate within them. There are some who may hear the word, and maybe the some is me today, maybe it's you, maybe it's somebody else. There are some that will hear the word, and it will be like the wind on a hot day. It'll just blow across us, and we'll be joyful for a minute, but when trouble comes, guess what? That's not where we turn, so we're just kind of shallow that way. There are days when life is tough, when there's all kinds of stuff that happens in our lives that guess what we do? We turn to the one who created us. And we have deep, deep, deep roots that are being nourished from the source. Those deep roots are being nourished from the source of our Creator, our Savior, our Lord. And in those moments, we have these deep, deep roots. We're not going anywhere. A hurricane could come by and it's not going to blow us away. So when we think about what kind of seed we are, we think about how deep are our roots. I look at these flowers up here and they're beautiful. They smell fabulous. They are wonderful. They had deep, deep roots in order for them to become so beautiful, right? They had deep roots. We need to be flowers. You know, this, this passage of Scripture talks about the fruit being, being grain, and, and grain we know turns into bread and the bread of life, and we can get into all of that. But the reality of it is, is that we need to produce fruit. What is the fruit? It isn't making little hash marks on a piece of paper, keeping track of how many people we've led to Christ. That isn't what it is. What is the fruit? The fruit is how we live our lives every single day in front of other people. It's how we have peace in our lives. It's important for us to have those deep, deep roots. I have highlighted in here, I just moved again, Danny's going to choke me. <laughs> Sorry, Danny. I'm trying to make her life not too difficult. But I have highlighted in here the, the places, the seeds that fell on the path and the birds came along and ate them up because they were laying out there completely exposed. Who are the people that you know in your life that that's the seed that they are? 
They're just kind of laying out there, waiting to be gobbled up. And what's going to gobble them up? This world that we're living in. And then there's the seeds that fall on the rocky ground where they did not have much soil and they sprang up very quickly. Have you ever seen those, those little weeds? You can walk by and you can just kick them with your foot. They come right up. There are those people in our lives. And then there are those who fall among the thorns. You know what I told my teenage kids when they were growing up? You are who you hang with. You might not do the same things as those other people do, but you get lumped in with them, and you are who you hang with. And maybe that's not all bad. Sometimes we hang with people who need to hear, need to hear the word, and they need to, they need to see the example that we can live. Jesus hung with all kinds of people, and that's what got him into trouble, right? Don't be like them, but spend time with them. And then there's those who fell on good soil and brought forth fruit. And the fruit was delicious, and it was wonderful. And what is it? What is the fruit? To me, the fruit, and it's different for everybody, so you have to discern this on your own. For me, the fruit is peace, love, acceptance, knowing, being assured that when I leave this earth, there's something better for me, that it's okay to leave this earth, and that that day will come Hopefully not real soon. You know, I just had a birthday last week. You start to look when you get to be a certain age. You start to begin to look to the future and say, oh, well, well over half of my life is gone, and I'm getting up there to three-quarters of my life being gone. The fruit, the fruit that comes, the fruit that we savor eternity. Jesus assures everybody in this passage of scripture of eternity. It's the promise and we remember that. So when you are venturing out in the world in the coming weeks, think about what kind of seed are you today? Sometimes we wake up in the morning and we say, oh boy, I'm just the seed that fell in the rocks. Or, oh boy, I got deep roots today. Because we slide around on the scale, don't we? But the ultimate goal is to return to having our deep roots that are nourished by our Savior, that are nourished by our Creator. And our example, our life is an example to those who live around us. And we share, we share what God has to offer to us. And that too is a fruit. So I encourage you to share with your family, your friends, and your neighbors. And I encourage you to think about the parable of the sower as you venture through life. Amen. Well, I would like to invite you to please stand as you are able and if you would sing, I call this the Disney hymn. I tell you this every time we sing this song. This song is in the original Pete's Dragon. So I invite you to stand and sing with me. Number 707 from the United Methodist Hymnal, the Hymn of Promise.
Please be seated. You know, as Jesus gathered with his disciples, he taught them to pray for their family, their friends, their neighbors, and for the world. Today, we're also going to engage in prayers for all those that we know, our community, and for the world, because the world really needs prayer, right? We need for God to intervene. I want to invite you to respond with the words, hear our prayer. When you hear the words, Lord, in your mercy, let's pray together. Divine Redeemer, Though we may not rejoice in sufferings for your sake or in reality complete what is lacking in your afflictions for the sake of your body, the church at least may enter into your ministry of reconciliation for which you gave yourself in death and resurrection. Hear us as we pray for the church, holy, Catholic, and apostolic, of which by your grace, We are members. Remember the errors and divisions that disturb and weaken the church. Raise up a continuing succession of faithful ministers to speak the truth of Christ with loving zeal. Increase the number of people who will be doers of the word and not merely hearers deceiving themselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. By every available medium, send your saving word to the limits of human habitation, that there may no longer be dark places unlit by the shining word of your grace in Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for our country and for our government, that justice may be fulfilled and that all citizens be led to contribute to the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our our prayers for the sick and the sorrowful, especially those who have requested our supplications on their behalf or for one dear to them. Heal their injuries, cure their diseases, restore them to health and strength that they may rejoice in your mercy. Have compassion on those who in grief and bitterness eat ashes like bread, and mingle tears with their drink. Lift up those who are depressed, and others who have no sense of their own dignity in your sight. Bring peace of mind to the disturbed, and freedom to the addicted. We pray for those whom we now hold in the silences of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, God of creation, after six days of work, you rested from your labors. Your people go out to their work and to their labor until the evening. After a lifetime of work also, you give us retirement and then final rest from our labors. We thank you for all those who once worked beside us, but now have entered into the rest that you have prepared for the people of God. Grant us perseverance that we may complete the work you have for us to do here, and then receive us into heavenly service and rest. To the praise of your name, God most holy, God most loving, God most wise. Amen. So now we pray as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, sharing the love of God and the salvation that Jesus offered to all of humanity is the primary task of the church. Doing this requires each of us to fulfill our baptismal covenant, to share our time, talent, and our gifts. 
Each week we set aside this time during our worship service to rededicate ourselves to the work and the mission of building God's kingdom and to receive our gifts. If you are participating online, you will find the information for this video or for this for online giving is located in the description of this video. And for those of you who are participating here in person, you will find some wooden boxes are in the back of the sanctuary where you are invited to leave your offering. Someone will take care of those boxes after the worship service today. Please stand as you are able, and if you would sing with me number 94 from the United Methodist Hymnal, Praise God from Whom All Blessings Flow. Let us pray and ask God to bless the gifts we have received. Multiplier of small things, make of us a force for good, uplifting what is best in our community to the glory of your name and the growth of your rule in the world. Use us and our gifts to grow your kingdom here on earth. In the name of the Christ we pray, amen. Well, please remain standing as you are able, and if you would sing with me number 2129 from The Faith We Sing, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. Did you sing this song when you were in Sunday school, when you were a little kid? That, that's the way I sang it, but you didn't. So. Well, but, but it sounded like we were at a funeral, right? We're deciding to follow Jesus. We got to sing with some gusto a little bit, right? Your playing was great. All right, let's try it again. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> much, much, much better, right? Man, I don't know about you, but following Jesus was the best decision I ever made in my life. 
because it was the place where I found love and acceptance and finally some peace because the first half of my life was anything but peace. But following Jesus made all the difference in the world for me. You know, like a seed that grows in secret, bursting its tomb, so may such beauty come forth from you, each of you, that all that you are and all that you do would give glory to the one who called you into being. Praise to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to share the light and the love of Jesus with the world. Amen.